Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Racer Star Crazy Bee All-in-One Flight Controller. This flight controller comes in two versions. You can either get it with a FlySky or an FR Sky receiver. The one I've got is the one with an FR Sky D8 receiver. In addition, it also features an old screen display and a 4-in-1 BLLES 5 ampere ESC controller. Inside the bag, we're getting the flight controller itself, a bag with a double-sided sticky pad, and we're also getting three options to connect the battery getting a 2 millimeters connector, a JST connector, and also a 1.25 millimeters connector. I think that I'm going to opt in for the 2 millimeters connector, and we're also getting the screws and mounting dampers. The weight of the flight controller is 3.28 grams, and its dimensions are 26.6 by 26.6 millimeters, so it's in the classic shape to fit a tiny loop frame. This is the frame I'm going to use, it's the frame I got from the X. 68S also got all the motors connected and you can see that it fits in the center without any problem. Now let's have a look on the board itself. On the top of the board we can find the bind button over here. Over here we can find the battery plus and ground pads. By the way this board supports only 1S batteries. On the bottom of the board we can find the micro USB connector. These four connectors for the motors. Racer style opt-in for this 1.25 3 pin connectors so we'll need to connect the connectors to your motors. It's not very convenient and I think it could have been easier if they just chose to use three pads like normal 4-in-1 AC controller but Racer Star chose to use this method which might be useful if you want to swap motors if something goes wrong. And finally over here we can find the camera connectors. We have over here the ground, then the plus 5 volts, video out and video in. The next thing I'm going to do is to connect it to this X68S frame and I'm using also the X68S motors. Hopefully everything is okay with these motors because I had some issues with this quadcopter, that's why I took it apart. So I'm going to connect the battery lead and also connect the motors. I use these connectors which are not fully compatible with this connector because I didn't have enough 1.25mm connectors. So make sure if you don't have enough connectors to purchase 1.25mm connectors in order to connect them to your motors because it's going to make your life much easier. So now I'm going to connect everything up, hopefully everything is also going to work, and then I'm going to show you the outcome. Binding the crazy bees down in the following manner. First of all, power on the board. And then you have to press the bind button for about two seconds until the lights on the bottom are going to stop flashing. So you can see after I press it for about two seconds, actually even less than that, you can see that now the LEDs are constantly on. Then turn on the remote controller, set the mode to D8, channels one to eight, hit bind, and you can see that the LED indicators here are flashing, you can hit exit, you can see that now we are getting the RSSI feedback on the screen and the board is bound. So now the quadcopter is ready. As you can see, I changed the battery connector into a JST connector. And in addition, I changed the motor connectors into 1.25 millimeters connectors and also shorted the wires, which were way too long and got on the way of the battery and also added some extra weight to this quadcopter. Now I've already flown this quadcopter and I can tell you this build is far from perfect. I could get less than a minute of flight time but of course this flight controller has nothing to do with it and I think the combination of this frame and motors is not great and I don't recommend to build this exact setup so I'm going to put some links in the description if you want to build yourself a micro brushless tiny whoop. Overall I think that this board offers a great value for money. The range that you can get is about 150 meters which is not bad for a micro brushless whoop. The OSD feature is great and the only thing that it's missing is a built-in VTX and I really hope that Racer Star going to add one in the future because then it's going to make the build process much much easier and also going to make this build lighter. Before taking it for the test flight I'm going to go over a bit of flight configuration but I just want to point out one thing that I think that you should change which is the gyro update frequency by default it's going to be on 8 and 2 so the gyro update frequency is going to be set to 8 kilohertz and the PID loop frequency is going to be set to 2 kilohertz you can see after I do 7 reboot the CPU load is now 23% and I had some troubles flying my quadcopter using this setting. So I highly recommend to change the gyro up to frequency to 2kHz and change the PID loop frequency into 2kHz. 
and now you can see after saving reboot that the CPU load is now 8% and now the quadcopter is going to fly much smoother. By the way, this quadcopter comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.3.0 and I've upgraded it to Betaflight 3.3.1. The next thing I'm going to do is to go over Betaflight settings and then take it outdoors for a test flight. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions about this flight controller, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye. Thank you.